I'm going to talk uh, a little about what we do. We, our um, products are in quite a contrast to uh, Scott's. You can buy quite a few copies of The Guardian for, for one of the products he's, he sells. Um, we're about $1.50, so uh, please buy more of us. Um, I'm just going to get rid of that for a minute. Get rid of that as well. Oh, man. All right, I'll ignore that for now. I've, I've just got uh, some notes, no slides. So if you want to get rid of that, that's, that'd be great. Um, yeah, so as Rinda says, I'm, I'm Andy Bill. I'm the technology director for Guardian News and Media. Uh, we publish The Guardian, uh, newspaper in the UK, The Observer on Sunday, and guardian.co.uk. Uh, and also more recently, a version of that now in the US, uh, particularly guardiannews.com. Uh, we've had to go dot com to uh, tap into the US advertising market. Um, we, uh, we also have a successful business to business division, which is all around the, the key verticals we operate in and are known for. Uh, so media news, environment, public sector, uh, and also environmental uh, areas. Uh, and this is going to be a talk about sustainability. Um, I know that the, uh, the kind of green energy guys are in the, the room next door at the moment talking about that. Uh, although this is about environmental sustainability, and I will talk about that, really the real context for this talk is, is sustainability in its broader sense and sustainability of the, of the company, given the disruption we face, which uh, Verinda touched upon, and which I know some of you in the audience know very much, uh, know just as much of me about as um, uh, Raju's here from the Washington Post. So I'll talk a little bit about The Guardian and that disruption, uh, and then about a couple of projects we're doing with universities that are helping us look at the, the transformation from print to digital. So The Guardian was uh, founded as the Manchester Guardian in 1821, so we've been around a bit. It was founded um, on the, in the aftermath of the Peterloo Massacre, which happened in Manchester, uh, and it was founded around social reform, uh, to support social reform in the 19th century. Uh, it, grew to have an international reputation, uh, and the most famous editor at the time was C.P. Scott, who owned and edited the paper. Uh, and in 1936, he created the Scott Trust to transfer the ownership of the paper to it. Um, and the trust was designed to protect The Guardian uh, and its liberal social reforming values um, in perpetuity. And the point of the trust is that we can't be sold or closed or transferred to something else or turned into something else. Um, the trust makes it impossible to do those things. It's unique in the UK press. Uh, and it's that, that, uh, that social uh, reform and social responsibility that's at the heart of the, the foundation of The Guardian makes it very important in terms of environmental sustainability, the contemporary ideas of environmental sustainability today. It's very much at the heart of our values. So C.P. Scott was a very visionary editor, uh, and I think he would recognise and very much approve of the way The Guardian today has embraced the internet uh, to extend its journalism uh, and do new things uh, with journalism. But he'd also recognise the difficult economic circumstances it's created. And, and it, it's, it's that change, that, that structural change that the internet's brought, brought um, which is what we describe as digi digital disruption today. So while the fundamental proposition um, we have in our business of monetizing uh, our content through creating valuable audiences uh, that our commercial advertising clients want to sell to remains the same, the economies of scale have changed dramatically. So the newspaper sells approximately 400,000 copies a day, something like that. The website has now 50 million unique users a month, which sounds fantastic. But the money we can make per reader or per user, um, while it's gone up, uh, the reader numbers may have gone up a uh, hundredfold, the money we can make is, is, a, is a thousandfold less. And it's that gap that all of us in the, the newspaper industry are, are, are working at, trying to work out how we, um, we close that gap and, and have a sustainable business. The last couple of years of the, re the recession and the economic times have merely accelerated this, this change. So that we now we face the, the, we can actually see the point where print um, will no longer be economic at all. But also digital is a huge opportunity, obviously. Uh, and, and many of us are making um, new businesses from it. It's a many-to-many -many 
medium. So it's linking people in, in, in new ways. Um, and, and at The Guardian, we talk about open journalism or mutualized journalism. And this is about bringing in you and us. Before it was always the, the, the newspapers had the information and passed it out. Now it's more of a collaboration. They're very much in keeping with um, some of the things we heard about yesterday. For an advertising company, it also delivers the potential holy grail of the right advert at the right time for the right person. So there are many opportunities. And that, um, that change represents a, um, we need a, an organizational shift to support that business change as well from print to digital. We call ours digital first. And this recognizes while there's no doubt about it, we, we, are, we have to go after our digital future and put most of our effort there. It still has to recognize the fact that most of our money still comes from print. And that's an incredible tension. So there's big challenges, but there's opportunities too. And very much the same is true of sustainability when you're looking at this context. We're moving from a, a very well understood, very well understood um, print model of well understood uh, recycling, paper manufacturing, logistics, to a very complicated digital supply chain, uh, which has many, many parts outside of our control. Our vision today is to be a leader on sustainability within the media industry. So we need an approach that can allow us to understand sustainability in a digital world as well as we do print. And that's where our partnerships with these two universities have come in. So we've partnered with the University of Bristol and the University of Surrey in the UK uh, on two projects. The first, SIMPACT, led by Dr Chris Priest at Bristol, is all about that supply chain. It tries to it's trying to measure the whole end-to-end -end footprint uh, of our life cycle of our digital products. Now, it seems like that's just another carbon footprinting exercise. But while there are lots of information around data center use and green data centers, it's only the beginning of the story. So we have to go from the data center where that's used for many different things, uh, and segment out just our digital products. Um, it then has to take in the networks uh, which deliver our, our content. And those now include things like content delivery networks that are in different countries as well. So that aspect has to be brought in. And then, of course, now we all consume uh, our media on many different products, uh, devices, through many different networks. And all of these things have to be measured. What they're trying to do is, is take real world examples. So for example, someone with an iPad here in Orlando looking at our iPad app um, and measuring the, the energy use of all of those steps. So we can create some simple models that now allow us to apply that to, 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 to the rest of our supply chain and also for others to use as well. So what are we learning? We're about to release the first findings, but what's clear is that the energy consumption uh, for digital historically has been very overestimated. Um, <coughs> The interesting point we're finding, though, is that the, the key energy use is all in the use phase. So it's actually when you, you, you're on your iPad or you're on your computer at home reading our content. That's when all the energy gets used up, not in our data centers. And this is very much like the, the washing machine example, which you may, have, you, may have, um, may have, you may be familiar with. Washing machine manufacturers, uh, when they started looking at um, sustainability, thought, well, we'll have to make green washing machines, make the them, make them manufacturing process very efficient. But when they looked at the whole life cycle, it was clear that energy was used up when people washed their clothes, and therefore they switched their attention to making low energy cycles and working with the washing machine, the washing powder manufacturers. And the second project is very much looking at a similar thing. How can we intervene at the creation of our digital products, our, our website and our apps, to make them more sustainable? Stephen Wood, uh, the research engineer at uh, Surrey, is, d is doing this work. Um, and a lot of what it's about is user-centered design, which is, is, is becoming a key trend in, in digital development, putting the user at the heart of, uh, of what we do anyway. And we're trying to link into this, this idea. So some things we do already, um, we, we try and make our website very fast, which often means making it very um, small amounts of data. Um, and that obviously uses less, less energy. But those kind of changes um, have very often been found actually just make people use them more so the energy use goes up. Now we want people to use our, 
our, our website more, so that's a good thing. But it means we have to intervene in a different way. What he's using is something called design for environment, and this is very common in um, physical design, so architecture, transport, automotive, these sort of things. And it's about keeping the performance and the quality of products, but making them more sustainable. And can we do that with digital products? To bring this to life, I'm going to try and bring this back. There we go. To bring this to life for people, he, he's created this. Um, can we have that on there? Please, thank you. Um, he's, bought, he's made this dashboard. Um, so this imagines a part of the Guardian, um, very much in keeping with the Google Labs concept. If you use, a, if you use Gmail, you'll know about this. You can switch things on and off uh, to experiment. Um, and so some of the things on here you'll see um, allow people to make sustainability-friendly um, options on the website. So for example, we can switch on display CO2 information um, on, onto, the, onto all our content. So this will, this will allow people to see, how, when they click on a piece of content, how much energy is being used to, to deliver it to them. And in Design for Environment, this is called um, Behavior Adaption Through Eco Feedback. The, the, the more common example you, you're probably aware of is that cars now tell you when you're driving economically, when you're driving well, and they'll tell you when you're driving badly. Um, it's exactly the same concept, and it allows people to kind of make a more informed decision about what they're doing. Um, uh, we've also got things like um, default to low bandwidth video. So you can switch that on. Uh, and again, this is, this is about adapting behavior uh, through functionality. So um, by making it harder uh, to get at the kind of the less sustainable options, you inherently make the thing uh, less, have less environmental impact. Okay. Um, so to finish, um, two interesting academic products, uh, projects I realise, but, but in terms of the business, I'd just like to make the point that um, the reason we're doing this is not around comparing print to digital, which is often what people want to do when they get, kind of get hold of this information. It's about trying to get the same deep understanding of our new business model around digital that we do for print. Because only by doing that are we going to be equipped to um, actually understand it properly. Going back to the start, our company is a lot about values, and our readers and our users will always expect us to live those values. And by doing this kind of work, we're able to understand much more about how we can then be equipped to live those values in the future. Thanks very much for listening.